Yeah, hi everyone. So Avinash, Avinash has been with, uh, in, in the television business for a even longer time, but I think your first job was more than 20 years, 21 years back, I was just checking, with NDTV. So that is the first time you were in the news business. That's right. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes when I look at India the way it was, say, 25 or 30 years back, I always think of India has changed so much that sometimes I think, wo na black and white mita. Now it's become in color, right? So if you look back to your days in the news business, like in NDTV 20 years back, how do you remember that? It was a very different business, wasn't it? Or was it the same? See, in a lighter way, if I were to put it, as you mentioned, it was from black to white. At that time, my hair was black, and now it's mostly white. <laughs> but uh, apart from that, I mean, on a serious note, see, the fundamentals of the business still remain the same. The beauty about the news business is that you can add a little flavor to it, you can add different layers to it, but fundamentally it still stays what it has been for centuries. Uh, right from the time, you know, mankind has arrived on earth, word of mouth has been the way of spreading news. Then there are multiple mediums that have come in, right. and everybody has shared news. So the basic essence of news has always been there. It's only layering and adapting with the times. Dissemination changes. You can have a plain Valena news, you can add some flavors to it, you can slice and dice it in short form, long form, you can make it horizontal, you can make it vertical. But you know, when I to use... You can uh, do all of those things. Yeah, sure. But you know, to use your example, uh, you said plain vanilla, so let me take ice cream as an example. I mean, so ice creams have been around for a long time, right? But, and vanilla is still there, but you have like a million flavors or a thousand flavors, right? The way in which it is served, the way in which it is stored, everything. Is, I mean, a lot of things have changed. So in that sense, how has the news changed? I mean, so it would See, see which is what I'm trying to tell you. There are, uh -huh. there are form factors which change. Like if you look at the FMCG business, people make sashes. Right. Right. Or there is fortified milk with calcium added. You add certain more vitamins to it. You make it more appealing. The packaging changes. So you do that. But finally, the job is nutrition. The finally, the job of news is to inform. Right. And it informs. At certain times, it doubles into something which borders on entertain. Okay. okay. So it's not just inform, but it's also entertain. But information layered with an entertainment around it. So when you look at these layers, you know, you're saying that the layers keep on changing or the accent changes, right? So if you look at these layers, what are those layers? If you just look back, or, because you have a unique... Uh, you have a unique See, let, me, let, me, let me put it this way. Hmm. Around the time when there was only Doordarshan in India and that used to produce news, you didn't have much of an option. You would consume what was dished out. And it was long form and it was pretty much in the studio and you would face a camera and you would read the news and everybody remembers those names, right? Everybody remembers those names of all the old news anchors of the Darshan days because you didn't have any other option. And they became celebrities in their own right, much probably lesser than what today's are, but it was the case there, mm. right? Now what happens is formats change. So the same one, if you're standing behind the, you know, a table and you know, you're reading out the news versus you're out in the field of action. You're reporting live because at that time, the technology to go live always had challenges, bulky equipment. Today you have mobile journalism. You can actually go live from any place that you want to do. You can form 30 seconders videos out of it. Mm -hmm. You can change the language which you say news. You can make it clickbaitish for youngsters because youngsters may not like the staid vanilla delivery mechanism of news. But finally, you are saying what is happening. So if there's an election and somebody's won it, you can say the same thing in 20 different formats. What format appeals to the audiences that you are doing will also vary. So as a news organization, the language or the communication or the format that I will use on digital will be different from the way I use on television. When I use in Marathi, I will use it differently the way I use it in Assami. When I use it in English, I will deliver it differently. But if you strip down all the layers, fundamentally I am telling the people that here is the election, here are the results. You can make it look graphically beautiful because that's the enhancement that has come in already. You can make things appear on the floor as if something is happening, which is advanced graphics. You can do all of those things, but fundamental need, it's much like if you look at FMCG business. I mean, there are FMCG giants who have 30 brands of soap. They all do the basic job of cleansing the body, but they all are at different price points and all with different value added so services. So then, what it is. Could it be then that the business economics of news have changed far more than the nature of news itself? See, business economics is depending on the audience shifting behavior, right? So as a question, like I remember in the earlier panel, there was a discussion, you know, it's, it's delivery formats. Because if you were available earlier to an audience which was Doordarshan, which was terrestrial, now terrestrial doesn't exist, right? right? 
cable and satellite came. Now cable and satellite got fragmented into DTH. Now there is free dish, there is DTH, and there is cables at top. Then there is connected TVs. Then there is different ones. So if you believe that the same person is watching all the formats, then you are mistaken. Because once you know that election happened, and this is the result, whether he catches it on a social media, or whether he catches it on a broadcast, or whether he catches it anywhere else, he already knows what the result is. Only if he's interested in knowing more dynamics about it, he can then log into whichever preference he has and then try and delve into that. Now, how does it change the business economics? Fundamentally, news stays the way it was. What matters is then we have branches, like for example, if we do a digital, if we do live streaming, if we do on, for example, we might do on YouTube, we might do on, like my friend here, Vikas does on Distro, we might do on different, different platforms, you might want to do that, right? But your fundamental offering doesn't change. And which is why the difference here is, unlike entertainment world where anybody can entertain and anybody can get the views, the brand name or the credibility of a brand name that lends itself to the authenticity of the news, that is what matters. And that is what takes years and years to develop. And that is what journalists also of repute build over many years when people start trusting what they say and that is all it, it is about. It's about trust. So that fundamental fabric I don't think gets really that much, you know, uh, it, it is obviously a subject of much speculation and debate about all of those kinds of things, but in reality, stripped down on everything else, it is doing that service. Now, I remember one of the first things that you'd asked me, when I joined uh, news media, the number of households in India were 38 million households, and I remember that. That was essentially when the diary system was there. This was way back in my days as a media planner in, in HTA. Now today you are sitting at 210 million households and every year 10 to 12 million television sets are still getting sold, right? So the way to look at it is now one could be stayed and one could think that, oh, there is nothing else. I've been in this business for 25 years. Mm. I've been with, you know, networking for 10 years. What does one do next? The reality is that you got to wear your best suit every day because every year 10 million households are seeing you for the first time. Very good. Right. Whether they are seeing it on mobile, whether they are seeing you on a connected TV, whether they are seeing you on broadcast, whether they are seeing you on free dish, they are seeing you and you owe it to the country if there is a contribution towards whatever, you know, the, the GDP growth has been. I think we, as news broadcasters, will always want to short sell ourselves. But the reality is the progress of the country is also a manifestation of all the information that has been dished out by all the news broadcasters in the year. Sure. Sure. So there is always a negative look that you might have a, you know, at, of any business or critique it. But if you pull back the layers, there are days when, you know, people appearing for UPS exams and any one of those, if you do not watch news, if you do not, then you are living under a rock. Yeah, you sure. really don't know what sure. is happening. Yeah. Right. So, so let me ask you a question. I mean, I'm going tangentially, but I'm, the monetization has come up in the last two panels. So I have to ask you, I'm allowed one question to ask you around monetization. You heard the first panel? Yes, yeah? I have. Okay. So, uh, do, do you have a point of view on, on, uh, the, on, on, let's say, the integrated measurement system? See, my fundamental belief is that, you know, it's easy to pick on a measurement system, but the fundamental belief is that business survives on demand and supply. Correct. Right? So, when you have a product, if you care, if you are able to create a demand or if you are able to manage the supply in a fashion that people are wanting to buy it, you will automatically find the models of monetization. Now, when you look at a crutch, which is, oh, somebody should measure me and then I will do that, you will find all kinds of things that will go wrong with this. Why is that? Because if we are in the broadcast business, we do not first look at the rating and then invest in a channel. We first invest in a channel because we believe that our product is good our product is differentiated and we will make it in available in all the places and we will put it at a proper price which is the classic four piece of marketing we will do all those things to ensure that people watch us when people watch us then automatically we'll get the money right because the advertisers want to reach out to the people who watch us right when it comes to a research company a research company again invests with the hope that their investment is good enough and people will pay for the research Right? So nobody is doing these businesses in charity. Sure. If we look at IRS, if we look at BAR, if we look at TAM, if we look at INTAM, if we look at any one of them, has any one of them been a not-for-profit organization? The reality is no. Right. Whether it is AC Nielsen in the US, whether it is globally, has any one of them been for non-for-profit? No. Will there ever be a perfect system? The only perfect system, which will never still be perfect, is a census. Right? A census cannot happen real time, minute by minute, for everything Correct. else. Right. Right. And yet at the same time, the dichotomy is that there is thousands of crores still getting into, you know, mediums like print, which doesn't have a minute-by-minute -minute measurement. 
which doesn't have a month on month measurement which doesn't have a year on year measurement and yet the money goes there i ask the same people that when there is for example you take out a huge hoarding on the dnd flyover or you take a huge hoarding anywhere else where is the number how many people are watching it but the answer is you believe that people are watching it and hence you put the money behind it so it is the belief that people are watching and that's what makes the entire thing go round which is why if there was such a confidence in any of the numbers you would then look at oh i need to actually convert into sales you would look into multiple measurements which is happening what is happening in digital correct right? but fundamentally if 55000 meters is something that the industry is willing to pay for why would a measurement system not want to do 5 lakh 55000 why would they not want to do 55 lakh homes as long as there is somebody willing to buy that data right so the answer is so we say we say we get the, the answer willing to pay for the answer is in economics right if there is a market then somebody should do it now now independent if there was somebody let's say who's backed by a private equity fund and wanting to you know do 55 lakh meters the adoption has to be there by because now the act of measurement is an act of parliament right so there is regulation involved there is industry bodies involved and there are obviously the users involved right so it doesn't only mean that you have if you are mr money bags that you will come into the business and you will start reporting the numbers so there is a certain sanctity which has come in because you cannot always rely on mr money bags okay. to come in and do something okay. about it so there is science economics and then behavioral issues that come out with it and then only it is worth for anybody to sit and pontificate on any business or you know point out because opinions will vary right depending on which end of the spectrum you are mm. but fundamentally it's a business being run okay so tell me uh, do you share what seems to be a common concern about monetization of news online do you worry about it in the same way that many people seem to see my views are probably little different in the sense like see on a, at a fundamental level i may not disagree with it but the thing is that i have always been of the belief that what you sell is what others will buy if you do not sell it people cannot buy it right so if you define your monetization that this is my strategy now who stops if you think your product is great enough and if you want to put everything behind a paywall people will pay and you will get a new revenue stream same thing that we have done with money control right it has the largest user base of paid subscribers today and the business model evolves into a complete different direction now that means the conviction that my content is differentiated and my content is really going to get me the money not only from advertisers but from other sources but business is easier to i mean it's diff- i'm not saying it's easier but easier than general news isn't it to monetize the issue is not about business or general the issue is about conviction with what you do right now if you were to look at it network eating for example all our channels are pay channels right but if i look at 200 channels maybe only 20 30 are pay channels rest everybody is free to hear so it's the it's the choice of the 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 decision that you make okay right so if you make a particular decision that you are looking at only advertising sales as one medium then your dependency on the currency system will be larger because that is what the belief of advertiser is that, that x many people are watching it okay if there was lesser supply and not 200 channels because we are only the only country perhaps with as many news channels as as many languages than any other country in the world right so that's a problem of demand and supply mismatch now if it, if a supply was lesser like for example what happens in the case of cricket the rights are bought mm-hmm. and when the rights are only with one person you do not see 20 channels operating the same feed of a cricket match it's only one network right. that does it correct and they get the money because it's exclusive content right so the supply is a ch- issue so everything again boils down to the economics of the business right because rest everything is fine i mean you know if there is a money then people will make money okay so you know i'm sure you know you're sounding uh, far more positive than many senior executives in the business so so wh- let me ask you so where do you see the growth in revenue terms in the news business where will it come from So in, in the so next six, three years, so there okay. is a, there is a lot of hope. So, for example, I am a pay network, right? Okay. Every every year, ten million homes are added into the television fold. Correct. Right. There are two hundred and ten million households on an average household size of around four point five. The okay. household size in US is around two point six. Okay. So, if the fragmentation of nuclear home happens, then by default you will be ending up with at least six hundred million homes in India, at an average household size of two point two, two point three. Oh, oh. What, what kind of million. time are you thinking of? What time? Frame? I think. I will not be able to get because okay. See, it depends on how many people go out to cities to work or migrate it's and how the household sure. will do. Okay. So the potential to increase even on the subscription line is huge. 
because only 210 million are there out of the currently 300, 320 odd million households, which is likely to go to 600, and 10 million are adding every year, audiences will keep going because this is the same argument that was held when 38 million households were there. And when right. some you know, industry body, some valuations of the industry thought that we should move to a CPT model and not a CPT, CPRP model. Now, if it was a T model at that time agreed, whatever the floor price was, from 38 to 210, we would have all seen a bonanza which would have made sure that currently the advertising ratio, the advertising spend to GDP ratio, still hovers around 0.6 in India. It never seems to go higher than that. It won't be seen it for it long Because for the simple reason, uh. if you look at the count of television advertisers in India, hmm. the count of television advertisers in any active year is roughly 10 to 12,000 only. Okay. The right. count of, for, and I'm reflecting about television, right? right. But yeah. if you were to look at online, online yeah. advertisers, yeah. the number will go 5, 10 lakhs and more. Correct. Right. If you look at print, print by itself has 2 lakh advertisers active in a year. Right. So it's a question of how deep you dig, how much you invest in the business, will the return come from. Right. Okay. And so my fundamental belief is that these are not businesses that you can shy away from investments. You have to make the investments and you will stand tall because there is a market as long as you are able to give the product and you are able to break it into sachets, you are able to break it into the formats that people want to do. You have to keep an ear to the ground to listen to the audiences mm. because finally it's between the audience and the publisher. Okay. So the advertiser comes in only because there is an audience. Okay. So you know, you've, you've seen uh, news from 20 years back, right, when there were 38 million households. As the number of people keeps on growing, okay, and you get them from different strata, because I think 38 million times people in those times would have been relatively the better of ones. So as you keep on, the number keeps on increasing, okay. The, so has news dumbed down over the last 20 years? I mean, this is something people always say, oh, yeah, you know, it has to be more drama, less information. Or do you, do you question the very, uh, the definition of news and you say, listen, that is the way it was defined then and now it's fine. No, I, I, I don't have any such. You know, like you said, I'm an optimist. I do. I, I am an eternal optimist. You definitely are. Right? I'm an <laughs> eternal optimist. My thinking for you is very simple. If you look at, go back a few years, go back a couple of decades and look at Doordarshan. Hmm. Doordarshan had news, had mythological shows, had movies, had music, hmm. Chitrahars, had serials, hmm. had everything in it, including Krishi Darshan. Hmm. Right? It was one platform which was content agnostic. All kinds of content was on one platform. In news, if you were to say, the only differentiation that has happened is the change of language. There are 24-hour Tamil channels, there are 24-hour Marathi channels, there are 24-hour English channels and Hindi channels. Okay. Now, is there a possibility to have a 24-hour debate channel? The answer is yes. Is there a market for it? The answer is yes, definitely there is a market for it. Is that addressable today? The answer is yes, it is. But are people willing to pay for it? And is the size good enough for an advertising-based model? The answer is may not be today. But maybe tomorrow. Is there a market for a 24-hour only fast news or a speed news channel? The answer is yes. Is there a, is there a market for a kids-friendly 24-hour news channel which is only dishing out non-political, non-criminal stuff which is based on science and technology and culture and everything else? Hmm. The answer is yes. There is, it's no secret that, for example, you know, I worked, used to work in a company which was into factual entertainment earlier. Hmm. There are aviation channels in UK which have a subscription model because there are aviation enthusiasts in that country who are willing to pay for that content, right? And that broadcaster decided that they could actually launch a separate service for aviation enthusiasts. Now, if you were to take that into India, the number of people employed in its all history of the Indian Air Force, these are all aviation people and their families. That's a huge, sizable market. Now, is that lucrative enough for advertising? Yes, sir. I don't know. That you have to check. Is that lucrative enough for some yes. subscription service to happen? The answer is yes. How will people pay? If you look at the cable and satellite market, that's regulated. By TRI, you cannot lift the pricing beyond a certain point of time. There is NTO1, there is NTO2, there is different kind of thing. So the answer is digital, yeah. right? Where you might have a subscription service. And the first, you know, entries into these things are already happening with what we are doing with journey control, certain other things, because exclusive content or good quality content will always find takers, okay, good. right? So I would like to believe that you can define any one of these things. It's not, the problem is not the content. The problem is understanding how you want to reach the audiences and whether there is sufficient size yeah, and scale in that. Yeah, yeah. I'll just give small that example. There is a, a, a nice old story, you know, that there is a niche in the market, but is there, is there a market in the niche? That's what I'm saying. So, for example, you saw many companies launch short format videos. 
right? You might call it reuse, you might call it something else, you might call it different, different names, right? There are many people. Now, a few years back, it didn't exist because nobody thought that that would work. Now you people, you see the people scrolling. Now what that has created is a separate created economy, right? Sure. As long as you are able to catch in on a trend or catch in on something that you think is going to last, okay. then there will be content creators which will jump into that gap to serve the need of the consumer okay. because they themselves haven't tested the formats. Okay, I, okay, I want to ask you something. There's so much in the business has changed, right? Especially going to digital, etc. How well positioned are news channels from an HR standpoint in terms of skilling? I think the needs are changing, right? Uh, are channels prepared? What are they doing? Where are the big challenges? See, I'm I'm very glad that you asked this question because that is something that is a worry, right? Why is it a worry? The the prolification of the news channels at least count if there are 200 active news channels, 10 anchors a piece. Right, would mean 2,000 news anchors. Right, and then you look at all the reporters in all the districts, if everybody were to really go down and do that thing, there aren't enough journalism schools to produce that kind of, you know, output over the years. And mostly it has been in print. Then there are the video editing business, the entire, you know, the back end of it. Then there is the graphic side of the business. Then there is the fact checker side of the business. The point is that the business has moved many, many levels of evolution. Skilling hasn't take, kept pace with it, right? And that is what we find as a largest issue. So is, is the issue that we cannot attract the right talent, or is it something else? Or is it about reskilling people inside the company? It's, it's perhaps, I think, perhaps all of us are to blame. Because if all institutes or institutions like ourselves, like we spend a lot of time and money in trying to reskill people or skill people, right? So that the newer mediums, it is easy to find somebody else new to do that. But how right. do you get an existing guy to retool themselves and to learn different skill sets so that they adapt, right? So over the last couple of years, we have taken a massive, you know, a convergence exercise to make sure that to make the elephant dance in that sense, right? To get people to learn the new way of content consumption. Because you had a thumb roll that worked for digital, you had a thumb roll that worked for television, it may not work for digital. So the first step of solving the problem is to realize that there is a problem. A thumb roll as in? Thumb roll as in empirically you know, which channel, this thing will work, this thing won't work. Okay, that because is. it's accrued, you know, intelligence yeah. over years of being in the business and senior editors know that like at the back of their hand. Right, right I'll play the story up, it's going to be, you know, taken well by the audiences. I may not choose this one. So that is, you don't right. take the decisions basis data every day. Correct. You have these muscle memory of That's sources right. that you work yeah. with, right? Yeah. Now that muscle memory doesn't exist in the digital world today to such an extent because audiences are, newer audiences and newer age groups are jumping every day into that medium. So sometimes something that might spike up may not spike up the next time. Correct. So how do you keep learning and listening and analytic skills keeping in mind with the evolving audiences because if you do not, for example, produce content in an Assamese language, people will not know that you had an ability to produce content in Assamese language, right? Which makes sure that if we have a 24-hour live channel in Northeast, which means that we do recognize that there is a space to launch one. We launched a channel on 15th of August last year for news in Jammu and Kashmir, a 24-hour service, because otherwise there were a couple of local news channels, but no national news network was there. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a market? the market will come. But the first thing is you need to launch a service because you are convinced that the service has value. When so connection is mostly what it is all about. Yeah, I, I, I notice you've come back to this whole thing of believing in what you're doing and conviction in the business. How long does it take when you say, listen, you want to put it out there, then the business will come at some point. What kind of time frame do you work on when you think of a regional channel? So typically you will work on a, on a three to four year kind of a time frame, depending on the market that you're operating with. Right. Right, and that again is dependent on how well you read the market, how you are ranked in that particular market, and what is the consumer affinity for that market. So, so you choose the markets that you want to get in, and then you accordingly look at the cost base and alter your cost base depending on what the, the market, market is. profitability index of that particular market is. So it's nothing different than what an FMCG marketer would do or a, or a business person who's running an FMCG. You we just have about a minute. I want to ask one question, which is about AI. Which, which part of the business is it impacting first? See, potentially it can impact all lines of business, but depends whether you see it as a friend or a foe, right? But irrespective, I mean... Irrespective, if I were to look at it, if I were to look at it, could you create or replicate, you know, quick models of, you know, AI-based anchors running new scripts, 
you could do that, right? Anybody could do that. It could pick off a script and it could read one and you would not be able to distinguish whether it's a right or wrong. The answer perhaps lies in that it's not a problem of plenty. The problem is that the brand names are coming from the house of Network 18 or are coming from a house of XYZ. That is what finally will be the determinant on whether you will trust that or you won't trust that. Because producing content is easy. Yeah. Getting the credibility and the trust of that content is what takes decades and decades. No, but and decades. could it be somewhere else, maybe in packaging? And, uh... So in terms of efficiency, it would massively help. So for example, if I was to currently skim through all the video content that I churn out, and if I was to pull out all the moments where there is a shot of an umbrella, for example, inside all the content, and if I was to you know, use contextual advertising and offer all places with umbrella followed by an ad by an umbrella guy, I could use that in a business case. Can I also use it for video editing and remove the huge chunks of video that come in and not and remove a huge amount of manual intervention? Answer is yes, I could do that. Could I use it for graphics to enhance the efficiency? Answer is yes, I could. Could I write better scripts for my news narrators? The answer is yes. But without a manual supervision, I don't think we will let that pass muster that's, without any that's, that's supervision. Because finally, and I'll probably end with that, is... You know, it's the editor's role is even more important than any other role ever before, right? And I used to ask this question to people. If I have a minute, then I can elaborate on that. Mm -hmm. Typically, what happens is I ask people when you go to OTT platforms, what do you what do you watch? Is it? And I ask the second question, how did you watch it? Why did you decide on that? They said, no, I chose it. I said, I differ. You didn't choose it. It was out of your history of choosing. The algorithm chose five options. You just chose from those five, but you didn't make a discovery by itself. So somebody chose the content for you and then you ended up watching it. Right. In a television parlance, it's the same thing. The editor chooses what right. you watch right. and a manual intervention is better because otherwise if you keep watching different things, like for example on social media, if your friends are from a political background, if they feed your feed with, you know, with all kinds of a, a particular directional narrative, you will be seeing more of that. So if you remove those friends, and you take friends from the other end of the political spectrum, you will see only those who aren't right? So you are the editor of your social media page. Very, very good point. And there is an editor who is sitting and deciding what is going. Okay. Right? So on that note, that's what I wanted to add. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. I, I really, I think, uh, I must say it's really been extraordinarily optimistic. So it's nice to see you in the middle of a lot of doom. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Rikal.